and you're around, uh, you do well too. Hello, kind of thing. Because it's just it's just a knock on effect, isn't it? Because that person's going to want to take care of their friends and family. So I don't know. I mean, I all I have to say is I believe and I think that all children need someone to look up to, and I wish that I'd have had a, you know more people when I was growing up, but. That's just the way it is. Sometimes you sometimes you meet people at different stages in your life. But if you've managed to hold on to who you are as a person and your integrity, then that means basically you can hopefully get to where you want to be and do the things you want to do. So because I know that it seems to be that a lot of these types of people are really scarce, especially in the black community. Sorry, Carol, I had to say it. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. I must say this. Um. We have got historically good role models, very ex- excellent black role models. But I just thought, it, you know, it can be really hard to find out about them, especially if you want to teach the next generation. Do you see what I mean? Because yeah. you've had to sometimes we, you know, the information is just not there, in it, and sometimes it's not even there in its entirety at all. You just can't find anything. So it's like, so I thought it would be fantastic, you know, especially for those, you know, young kids and teenagers, for them to hear from someone like Dr. Carthen, because he's managed to be so successful and he's done so much in so many different fields and areas of work. And it's the interview. I'm just, I was so happy to speak with him. He does speaking engagements around the world, people. So please, you've got to check out his website, Kero's link for, we're going to let people have that information to find out more about Dr. Carthen. He is known as the leadership linebacker. You know, he consults with Fortune 500 and 100 companies. So this man has spoken with world leaders, CEOs, you know, employees, managers, all types of people. And he inspires people. And I'm hoping that when you hear his interview, you'll be inspired as well because it's fantastic. It was fascinating speaking with him. So we're going to let you hear, but we're going to take a break right now and we'll be right back on the other side after this. Life is an interesting journey. You never know where to take you. Hi, this is Avani, UK soul queen. Eva, and you're tuned into the Ask Avani show on the Get Global Network. Good afternoon and welcome. This is the Ask Avani show. You are tuned in here to So Metro Radio. Mm-mm-mm. Yes, today, people, we have a very special guest. This is me, your regular slot, UK Soul Queen Diva here. I am in London. Yes, I am welcoming Kay Rose as program director of the Ask Avani show. Hi, Kay Rose. Good morning. Good afternoon, Avani. <laughs> yes, we have a very special guest this afternoon, Dr. Jason Carvin. Now, I have to say that I have been fascinated to speak to you. I, I found you online. It's fantastic. I wanted to talk to you, obviously, about you, Dr. Jason Carvin. But you know that I wanted to also ask you some questions as well, because my show topic that I want to incorporate into our interview is basically, but you know, about interviewing a person as such as yourself because you do so many different things leadership motivational speeches you have had a fascinating career and you still do so much so please everybody welcome dr jason carvin to the show hey hey it's good to be here thank you so much for agreeing to speak to me this afternoon on the ask Avani show wow i mean I know there is a lot that you do. You're multi-talented. You're very successful with many areas of expertise. Now, I was intrigued to talk to you because I know that you've done so much and I want to know more about your amazing accomplishments. But I was also really interested to know what makes a person such as yourself tick. How do you stay so focused? Oh, my goodness. Well, Ivani, I think uh, at the end of the day, I've experienced quite a bit of uh, stress, struggles, <laughs> challenges in my life. And, you know, I learned very early on that I had to be very intentional uh, with making sure that I could stay focused. And also, if I wanted to really reach some of the goals that I wanted to reach, it was going to take that, you know, nothing else was going to allow me to reach, you know, where I've been able to get to at this point. Fantastic. Now, I know also that because I have done my research on your good self, I wanted to find out because I know that you do a lot of charitable work and you, you know, you do you speak to which, again, I find fascinating. You speak to the Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 100 companies. You give keynote speeches. I mean, how do you manage to do all these things 
and stay sane. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, just being very structured, very structured. And my bride, my beautiful wife, she helps me to do quite a bit of that, you know, whether it's just trying to make sure I stay focused on the main things, you know, um, but it being very intentional with my schedule, uh, not overbooking and making sure I have a good work life balance and you know, some people would say, does that really even exist? Uh, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it really does. You know, I mean, if you if you allow certain things to just take over your schedule or if you allow things to press in and you don't have healthy boundaries, then, yeah, you're going to be all over the place. But, you know, I made the commitment, especially early in my youth, uh, <laughs> to make sure I guarded time uh, very carefully. And it, it's really served me well, you know. So even like today, uh, as I shared with you, just getting back from an engagement, I have another engagement later on today. But uh -huh. I wanted to make sure I allotted enough time to spend with you and, and especially your listening audience and just to share some things with them. So, yeah, it's all about uh, being intentional. That's the thing. Fantastic. See, that's you make it sound so easy. And <laughs> I, you, as you just said, you have to be focused. But how do you the work life balance thing? How, how do you juggle that? Because obviously you want to spend time with your family, but you also do the work that you do and you help others as well with charity and things like that. So how do you really right. get that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, let's let's go into the nuts and bolts of it. I, I think for me, I am very intentional with uh, some software programs that I have for scheduling. I use Evernote. Uh, Evernote allows me to keep the same schedule across calendars and they are all linked and connected to my iPhone. <laughs> so I get yes. the, yeah, I get those different updates. Uh, I also use my app. I have the Jason Carthen app and that allows me to keep everything sort of together as well. Um, and so it's it's one of those things. Again, you know, I use the electronic tools that I need to. But then, you know, I absolutely, if I can, make sure to take out of the uh, human element, you know, so I try not to overbook, you know, wow. and just want to be very intentional with that part of it. And I keep saying intentionality because that's that's really it. I mean, you can say that you want to be very regimented with your schedule and have a work life balance. But if you're not intentional, then that'll get blown out of the water fairly quick. <laughs> well, I'm sure people have they want to have great demands on your time because you are so successful because you give these speeches and people want to hear you speak and they want to ask you things. Obviously I put myself in that category too, you know, and they want to ask you things. So you, as you say, you're going to have to sort of almost regiment it so that you can make the time for the things that you want to do as also for the things that you need to do work wise as well. Right. Right. Yeah. And Ivana, you, you just hit on it. I mean, that's a, that's a great point. I think that, People don't realize, you know, when you wake up in the morning, your feet hit the floor. If you already don't have a plan for that day, then you're pretty much going to be playing catch up the entire day. You know, the goal is before you even go to bed, make sure you have a, a schedule of what you're right, going to do. Right, right. Yeah, uh, I was saying this earlier to Kay Rose. What's the saying? Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Yep, now, something like that. It's very close. Very good. <laughs> I think, you know, it, it's interesting if there was one nugget that I could share with your uh, listening audience, you know, just in intentionality. You know, I, I know it it encompasses a lot when I say intentionality, but, you know, it's like anything in your relationships, in your business, in your vision casting and your mission. If you don't have intentionality, you are going to be reactionary every time you turn around. Life is going to push you around. <laughs> There's not much wow. that you can do about it. So, you know, you have to be very regimented and be very intentional and be disciplined. And, you know, that's that's all part of it. That's all part Fantastic. of it. Well, you see, one of the many reasons I want to speak to you because you are so successful and I would. I thought you would be a fantastically interesting person to speak to because I said this to you, didn't I? I'm sure that people out there as well have noticed, especially in this day and age, there's a distinct lack of role models. And I obviously I'm over here in the UK and I noticed this and I thought the next generation of young people, they don't seem to have a lot of people that they can look up to. And I was wondering if you could give an insight into, for example, did you have role models that you could look up to when you were growing up or did you have to do things on your own to decide where you wanted to go? Mm, yeah, great question. You know, Avani, I didn't, <clears throat> to be honest with you. Uh, I grew up some days homeless. Uh, there were some days when I was trying to figure out where 
my next meal was coming from. And, and that was a challenge. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, and I like to, when I have opportunity to talk to young people or even adults, anyone at certain stages of their lives, they experience hardship. And one of the things that I've learned over a period of time is that regardless of whatever your circumstances are, you can't use that as an excuse <laughs> for not being able to move forward. I mean, if I look back over my life, I really should be a statistic. You know, so many things that took place around me, you know, that really would have taken most people out and they do take people out. Mm -hmm. But I realized based upon even your question, you know, I had to do the best that I could do with what I had. You know, I never knew my father. He never spoke into my life. And despite all those challenges, I began to try and figure out what do I see that looks right? What do I see that I could maybe emulate and potentially mimic until I figure it out for myself? And that's what I began to do. And I would encourage other people, unless you have a role model, unless you have someone speaking life into you, then you have to figure this thing out and go the positive route. There's so many examples where you can take the negative route. But Mm. if you see positive examples you know, emulate that first, you know, and then, you know, just be patient, keep doing the right thing. And maybe, maybe someone will walk into your life and they'll be able to bless you and show you the right path to take. But I didn't have a lot of positive influences. I had a lot of challenges and I'm just very thankful. Then then how did you stay so strong? Because if you were thinking, right, I've had all this almost adversity and I want, I see a path. I know I can do well I can be successful because remember there's all these things that could be coming at you you could have the peer pressure and people wanting to say come this way do this be with us we're going to be your family how do you have that mindset because I'm I've seen it where kids sort of say ah you know what it's too hard to to try and and no one wants me to do it because because they don't want to be on their own how do you what would you say to somebody like that absolutely great question Uh, the first thing you need to make sure you understand who you are You need to understand what makes you tick. When I go into maximum security prisons and I talk to the inmates, some are lifers, you know, uh, they share with me that, you know what, I wish someone had just encouraged me to have a better understanding of who I am. You know, and what I mean by that, you are less likely to engage in risky behavior. You're less likely to engage in deviant behavior if you have a better understanding of what makes you tick, you know. This ability to engage in self-reflection will limit your desire to get into some of these crazy things that some of our young people, myself included, would get into, you know. So, (laughs) you know, you have to have a better understanding of who you are, what makes you tick. And then again, I'm going to say this repeatedly. The more you can look around you, if you have positive examples, you emulate those examples. I don't care if people say, oh, that's corny or why are you doing that or whatever. No, you emulate the positive things and then you have an expectation that you can reach that type of success and that level of excellence in your life. But if you are not modeling that, then you're going to model something that's probably negative and it's going to begin to take you down a path. And and again, it bears repeating when I go into these prisons and I talk to these inmates, they'll share with me behind a little piece of glass. Wow. They can't even touch me. They'll slide me a note, try and talk to me and say, I just wish someone had took the time and told me that I matter. I'm important, you know, and don't do that. Don't be foolish, you know, yes. and. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that I try to be very intentional with young people, uh, even this morning, you know, try yeah. to, talk, um, you know, wow. I told him, I, I said this morning, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want a destiny of purpose and positivity as opposed to negativity, failing, potentially going to prison, potentially being a statistic? How bad do you want it? You know, and that's, wow. those are the things that I try to be very intentional with. Wow. So it's it's basically saying, and we're going to reiterate this again, you have to, as you said, decide who you are, what you want to be. And it's a long road to success. And it's, it's, it's hard work. Yes, it I'm is. I'm still working on me. <laughs> you know, every, yeah, you, you can't say, OK, I, I, I'm, I've done it. I don't need to work no more because there's always new things you can learn. There's always new things you can experience. Yeah. I, I, there's always new people you can meet. Yeah. Um, the, the wonders of technology. I, I am so happy we are blessed with it in this day and age now because it just makes my life so much easier and it's fantastic and I have to say I just want to know like um how would how do you feel now 
after what you've just said, which is fascinating that you said you have gone through homelessness, you were worried sometimes. 